can't get much for five. get much for five bucks these days unless is that a real song i think she liked it your choice of sandwich plus all this for just five bucks is worth celebrating choose wisely choose wendy's piggy bag <laughs> This is JJ Roberts from Huntington, and when I'm back home, you will find me at my local Parmar store. We have that thundering herd pride at your local Parmar stores. We are over 200 stores strong and growing. Download the Parmar app for even more savings and sign up for the Parmar rewards card. Whether it's food, gas, or groceries, we have you covered. We are Marshall and we are Parmar stores. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Get much for five bucks these days, unless. Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Get much for five bucks these days, unless. Is that a real song? I think she liked it. Your choice of sandwich plus all this for just five bucks is worth celebrating. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's Piggy Bag. Can't get much for five bucks these days. Unless. Local Parmar stores. We are over 200 stores strong and growing. Download the Parmar app for even more savings and sign up for the Parmar rewards card. Whether it's food, gas, or groceries, we have you covered. We are Marshall and we are Parmar stores. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Adventure takes you here, but much of it starts right here in West Virginia, where Toyota has lived alongside hardworking West Virginians for over 25 years, investing over $2 billion in the Buffalo manufacturing plant and bringing in over 2,000 jobs. And that helps fuel the local economy. Thanks for making Toyota the number one selling brand in West Virginia. See your dealer and start your adventure today. Toyota, let's go places.
the Marshall Orthopedics High School Game of the Week is presented by the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute. Fueled by your neighborhood Parmar store. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. And sponsored by Jason Elkins State Farm. The Marshall Orthopedics High School Game of the Week from Kendra Digital Sports. I care. I care. I care. I care. I care. It doesn't matter how big or small your problem is, we want you to know that we're all in this together. At Cabell County Schools, we want everyone in our school community to know that they belong and that we care. of it starts right here in West Virginia, where Toyota has lived alongside hardworking West Virginians for over 25 years, investing over $2 billion in the Buffalo manufacturing plant and bringing in over 2,000 jobs. And that helps fuel the local economy. Thanks for making Toyota the number one selling brand in West Virginia. See your dealer and start your adventure today. Toyota, let's go places. Planning for a funeral is never easy, and selecting the right mortuary can be important. Family-owned and operated for over six decades, our family has helped other families going through the most difficult time. Chapman's Mortuary and Crematory can help you plan arrangements today or offer a pre-need funeral plan in line with your intimate wishes. And now, we provide Huntington's only on-site crematory. Call us for a free consultation. Chapman's Mortuary and Crematory, serving the Tri-State for over 60 years. For today's quarterfinal playoff matchup between the defending AAA state champion Huntington Highlanders and the visiting Spring Mills Cardinals. I'm Christian Palmer, welcomed alongside by Woody Woodrum. Woody, 
Nothing gets better than playoff football, and we have the opportunity to call a game today between these two very talented teams. Should be a fun one, partner. Oh, absolutely. I mean, both these teams have had a uh, magical season. Spring Mills 9-2 and two right now is the best in school history. They've been around about seven or eight years, but still, you you got to have a best. Then it's best to beat your winning best, yep. and that 9-2 and two right now this season, they had a tough loss to Martinsburg uh, in the, in their next to last game, but they had an open week. Going into Hedgesville, though, I was talking to uh, some people from Spring Mills, and they were saying, well, it was just a war, you know, that they really got beat up some, and actually – they held out three or four players last week just because they were so beat up mm -hmm. uh, against Spring Valley. And, you know, that was a close one. They were lucky to get away with that because Spring Valley was up 10 nothing, then fell behind, but was 20-17 to 17 with Spring Valley inside the 10. And they drew back-to-back -back penalties that pushed them so far out they couldn't even go for a field goal with them. And they lost the game. So uh, I, I think everybody around here would just would felt – Oh, wouldn't it be great if it was Spring Valley Day because it would be a lot of fans from both back. schools. Yeah. But, of course, the people at Spring Mills are thinking that for next week. Well, we go yeah. uh, across town and play Martinsburg next week if we win, then we'll have a great crowd because we'll all be up there together. Uh -huh. So e either the Huntington area or the <laughs> Martinsburg area is going to come out a winner in both of these games today by who wins to match up with Martinsburg. Spring Mills nearly escaped the first round with a three-point victory over Spring Valley. And the team's quarterback, Max Anderson, had a tremendous performance in that game. Three touchdown passes and two went to his brother. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Xavier Anderson is a 6'6", 191-pounder uh, who caught a 21-yard touchdown pass and a 35-yard touchdown pass. So he did a nice job for them. Also coming up with the pass was Zachary Bender. Uh, he had a catch of 47 yards against Spring Valley. They gave them their 20-point lead, although they'd missed an extra point at that point. But, uh, yeah, you know, good athletes, you know, they're sure of that. And you can see them down warming up. Got some decent size. Uh, they're not quite as big probably all around as Huntington is. But as Billy said, you know, they look big enough. So yeah. <laughs> he's expecting a hard-fought game today couple last few notes on Spring Mills before we shift gears and talk about the Huntington Highlanders. Spring Mills averages over the course of the season, honestly, very impressive. The offense averaging 36.2 points per game, and the defense has been even better, allowing just over 100 points this entire season. And Huntington is a team that puts up points early and often, so the Cardinals will need that strong defense today, Woody. Yeah, sometimes it seems like Huntington, uh, at, unlike most teams that take and win the coin toss and defer to the second half, they want the ball. They want to set the, the pace of the game right away, and, uh, you know, so hopefully they get a chance to do that. This is a very good defense, though. Defensive coordinator is Buddy Hessen. He played at Shepard for both Monty Cater, who's going in the uh, College Football Hall of Fame yeah. this coming year, and Jeff Castile, who was a longtime defense coordinator at Martinsburg. So, you know, they have that look, the 3-3, where they'll run guys from the linebacker. They'll, they'll sometimes come from the safety. Even the corners can come on a blitz. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a tricky defense to go against. But, you know, Huntington likes their array of weapons, uh, you know, the big receivers who are big and strong, uh, you know, and one of the guys that's going to be out there playing free safety, much like Huntington, is their quarterback, Mike yep. Sanderson. And, of course, we will see Avante Crawford some at safety position when they move Khalif Ty over to play the corner position. Now let's talk a little more about those Huntington Highlanders. Ten and one on the season, the lone loss coming to Cabell Midland. But Huntington looking to get back to the state championship for a third consecutive season and started off the playoffs as good as you could ask, Woody. Dominated Morgantown 59-13, to and what a job that sophomore Kavion Wilson did in that performance. You know, when you lose a player like Dwayne Harris, it should hurt, and it did. He's one of the best receivers I've ever seen play the game. He's got great hands, great concentration, has exact cuts on his routes 
and really has a soft pair of hands as anybody ever saw. Troy Brown, Mike Barber catch the ball, Fuzzy Falez, if you want to go back to my, my years. Uh, guys that totally gave up their body for the ball, as Sonny Randall used to say. And, and he's doing that for this team. Over the last three games, I believe he's had three touchdowns against and then two touchdowns a week before that and three before that against St. Albans. He scored all different ways on, on kick returns, punt returns, receiving and rushing. So he's a one-man gang out there. And the great thing is here's a 6'2", 220-pound sophomore who still has two years yeah. to get bigger, stronger, and faster. He's not done throwing, I'm sure of that. The Highlanders running back, Zaw Jackson, had one of his best performances of the season last week in the win against Morgantown. Zaw finished the game with 159 yards on the ground, two rushing touchdowns. Billy Seals talked about him in our pregame, Woody. He called him the best player in the state. Yeah, well, Zaw can do the same thing, although he's not quite the size, obviously, of a Tavion Wilson, but... At 5'11", 190, he is muscular. He runs inside as well as outside. If he goes outside, he's got the speed to get around people normally. And so uh, he's a tremendous athlete. He, he runs track, plays baseball, he plays basketball. Him and, and, and uh, Tavion are the ultimate all-sport players, and, and they've still got a lot to do. And Zaz only a junior. So he'll be coming back next year along with Bryce Winkfield, who backs him up and who's done a marvelous job this year of doing that. Woody, we mentioned Huntington's lone loss of the season coming against Cavill Midland, but really that kicks the team into another gear. The Huntington game was a frustrating loss at home, but in the three games since that loss, Huntington is averaging 57.6 points per game. They started off really slow in that contest, and – have learned from their mistakes. Yeah, absolutely. Picked it up after that. And, you know, we know it's the playoffs. Anything can happen. Last night, Martinsburg absolutely dominates Jefferson. And, and then you turn around and you watch Bridgeport do the same thing to Midland. They did last year. Win big by three touchdowns last night. It was four touchdowns last year. And they're just a team that they don't match up very well with. And, and there are teams that do that to you sometimes that you just don't have the right personnel for whatever reason it might be to to win those games. So I, I think Huntington does have the right personnel to play this team today. They're, they're going to play uh, um, hairs on fire kind of defense and yes. send the guys from all different positions. Huntington is going to try to do what they do, which is run up down the field and count on their defense to get three and outs at, at often up and down the field. They, they do a great job of limiting people on third down. And, and in the red zone, there haven't been that many touchdowns scored on this Huntington team. And we saw, you know, against Hurricane, first and goal at the 15, first and goal at the 11, and first and goal at the 5. Didn't score. And Hurricane did not score. We want to remind you before things get underway here in Huntington, the West Virginia Secondary School Activities Commission promotes athletics that provide lifelong and life-quality learning experiences to high school students while enhancing their achievement of educational goals. Play, perform, compete together. Well, Spring Mills won the toss and deferred, so they're going to take the ball in the second half. Huntington, exactly what they wanted to do, get the ball first. So mentioned the Highlanders' offense has performed exceptionally well all season, but especially as of late, putting up 59 points last week in the opening round win over Morgantown. The Highlanders wearing their home green uniforms, green pants, green jerseys with white numbers. Spring Mills in its away whites. Pretty much an all white look besides the numbers and helmets. Darker color on the helmets and both special teams units Onto the field, ready to get things going. Zaw Jackson back to return for the Highlanders. <clears throat> Fernando Reyes to kick off for Spring Mills. Mikey Johnson got a couple of pop-up kicks last week. We'll see if they decide to go deep or pop it up. The kick by Reyes is a bit of a pop-up kick. 
that is muffed inside the 30-yard line. It's Mikey Johnson with the ball. Shrugs out of a few tackles, but is brought down pretty much right where he caught the ball. The Highlanders will start their first offensive possession on the 28-yard line. Well, not a perfect start when he bobbled it. Probably should have just followed on it, but it, he didn't really lose any yards. He caught it at the 28, and that's where the Highlanders start. The Huntington offense is led by Avante Crawford. Avante Crawford, the junior first-year starter at quarterback. Primarily played DB defensively last year, but has stepped in really well this season for the Highlanders. Some early movement before first down. Well, both teams pointed at each other. We'll see which way the officials had it. And they're going to confer over here. We've got a crew from the New River area, so people up in Webster County, Braxton County, that area, probably over to Pocahontas. And it is an offsides against the uh, visitors. Yeah, this is a stacked crew today. What do we have, like six to seven members out yeah, there? Yeah, seven members out there. That's the most I can remember for any game lately. It's hard to get people to do the officiating. That's true. Want to make sure to get everything right and an important matchup like this. First and five for the Highlanders. Empty set for Crawford. Sends a man in motion. Pitches it. To the near side of the field, that's Zod Jackson with the ball. Picking up some blocking, cutting back inside. He is brought down close to the line to gain. Number 26 coming up to make the tackle uh, is Nathan Graham. He was a first-team all-eastern uh, panhandle conference first-teamer last year. He played defensive tackle last year, lost a little weight. Now he's at, uh, at a guard. So first and 10 run by Jackson gives the Highlanders a fresh set of downs on their own 39-yard line. Crawford takes the snap, throws the ball over the middle. It's Malik McNeely making the catch it while falling to the ground. Really nice play made by the senior wide receiver. Picks up 11. That's another first down. Highlanders moving the chains early on in this contest. Looking to strike first blood. Mentioned Huntington with quick starts all year, 240 points in the first quarter this season. Marked it officially at 49 for a first to 10. It's going to be a handoff. Zaw Jackson running up the middle. Has great blocking. Oh, and a touchdown saving tackle is made by Spring Mills. It was Kenyon Mills of Spring Mills. Yes. s and &M. It's on his shirt and on his jersey. So another first down for the Highlanders. Puts the ball on the Cardinals' 32-yard line. 19-yard gain by Zaw Jackson. Two carries for 25. Just about a minute and a half into the game. The Highlanders working the ball down the field. First and 10. It's going to be a shotgun formation. Two receivers to the far side of the field, one to the near side. Crawford hands it off. Zaw Jackson with the carry again, running tough up the middle. Another good gain on first down. He's got seven yards. 26, Nathan Graham makes a tackle again, but not before he picks up about seven yards all the way down to the 25-yard line. So that'll make it second and three for the Highlanders. A couple of substitutions made for Huntington, as I believe that was Jamari Tubbs jogging off the field. Game clock is visible, but that sunshine on it yeah, it makes, it a, makes little it a little tough. Second and three. We'll have to see if that affects the quarterbacks either way. Two running backs in the game for the Highlanders. Saw Jackson gets the ball, and he is hit almost immediately. Brought down near the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I believe it was Max Anderson, the free safety, came on a blitz and was just able to get a hold of his arm as he was getting the ball. Bryce Winkfield was picking up somebody further up in the hole, and so nowhere to go that time and loses a few yards. 
It's going to back the ball up to the 25-yard line. Still 35. Scoreless. I believe that's 25. 25, okay. <laughs> 25, sorry. You're fine. Third and three. Crawford hands the ball off, and the hit is made in the backfield. Bryce Winkfield brought down. Great tackle made by Spring Mills defense. The Prophet with the tackle. Now, after not attempting <laughs> a field goal all season, Johnny Ai is on to attempt his second in two weeks. It's going to be a 45-yard field goal attempt. Snap is good. The hold is good. The kick is up. And it is good. Huntington strikes first with eight minutes and nine seconds left in the first quarter. We're going to step aside for a short break. You're listening to Huntington High School Football on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Going out? Hungry? Have kids? Looking for a fun, casual joint? Then Roosters at Pullman Square in Huntington is the place to be. Bring the kids 12 and under on Tuesdays, and they eat for just 99 cents all day long. That's right, an entree, two sides, and a drink for less than a buck. Plus, Tuesday at Roosters means a featured appetizer all day for just $2. Roosters will lighten your mood and not your wallet. And you can always enjoy your favorite sports on Roosters 40 TVs. Roosters at Pullman Square in Huntington. A fun, casual joint. In Huntington, where the Highlanders lead 3 to nothing with just over 8 minutes to go in the first quarter. Huntington with a score on its opening possession. The senior right-footed kicker, Johnny I.I., converting on his second field goal of the season. Return just made by the Spring Mills Cardinals' Ryan Swartz. Swartz able to get to the 32. That's where the Cardinals will set up shop. First and 10. It's going to be a carry to the far side of the field. Alex Eaton getting the ball, but not able to get much in terms of yardage. Yeah, Crawford came up, make the tackle from his safety position. So I believe the ball is going to be placed, yes, right at the original line of scrimmage. So that will bring up second and ten. They scoped out that run pretty quick. The Highlanders did a really good job last week against the run. Caillou Jackson and Robbie Martin, just a force up front. Showing a three-man front right now it means they've got the nickel in there. Second and 10. It's going to be another handoff. No, this time it's a quarterback keeper. Max Anderson with a good play fake. Tackled near the 35-yard line. Nose of the football just touching the 35. Three-yard pickup. It's going to bring up third and seven. Obviously a long way to go in this contest, but Huntington with a quick score. Spring Mills would love to answer back immediately. Showing blitz on the Huntington side. Third and seven. It's going to be a pass play. Pressure by the Highlanders, but a good read was made by Max Anderson, but just a little too much loft on his pass. He was looking yeah. for Austin Spinks. Yeah, the tight end was open, and then he threw it so high, he tipped it, and Zod Jackson just couldn't get himself reset to catch the ball. He was going for the tackle, but Will calls them to punt the ball, and it looks like number eight maybe is the punter. I believe that is Ryan Swartz out the punt, standing on his own 24-yard line. 
Saw Jackson back to return for the Highlanders. It's a high snap. Swartz has to scramble and get it and launches the ball down the field. A great play made by Swartz. Put the ball close to a receiver. What a turn of events that would have been. But the pass lands incomplete, out of bounds, and Huntington's got the ball in Spring Mills territory. Well, if he'd have tried to stop and kick it, I think he would have been tackled. Uh, number 11 was in hot pursuit, uh, Tavion Wilson. And he threw the ball up, and he actually gave. Anderson was near it, and yeah. so was another too far downfield, though. He couldn't keep it in bounds, and Huntington gets great possession there at the 35-yard line. Really an athletic play by Swartz to scoop the ball back up yes. and find a receiver down the field, everything but the catch. First and 10 for the Highlanders. Some more early movement. I believe the defense of Spring Mills just a little too eager. Well, I'm sure Avante Crawford trying to take advantage of that. He caught Caused them to be offsides early in the game, so gets them again. Two penalties for minus 10. Moves the ball up to Spring Mills' 30-yard line, first and five. The Highlanders currently lead three to nothing with just over six minutes to go here in the first quarter. First and five, Crawford pitches the ball to Zod Jackson who has some good blocking. He's inside the 20, finally slung out of bounds at the 16-yard line. Number two comes up to make the tackle for Spring Mills. That is the cornerback, Kenyon Mills. And it was a 19-yard pickup by the junior running back, Zod Jackson. The Highlanders now with the ball in the red zone. At the 16-yard line. Zaw is getting it down right now. Six carries, 54 yards already. Still in the first quarter. Crawford takes the shotgun snap, throws the ball over the middle. It's Tavion Wilson with the catch. He is very close to the line to gain. Might have had exactly 10 yards. Alex Eaton made the tackle, but uh, it was after he put his hands on the ball. Now it's first and goal at the six. Wilson with a nice catch over the middle, has that big six foot two frame, <laughs> so that allows Avante Crawford to just put the ball on him. First and goal, five minutes and 45 seconds left here in the first quarter. Huntington leads by a field goal. Crawford with the quarterback keeper, running up the middle, able to pick up a few yards, continuing to fight, but yeah, he got down to about the three in that neighborhood, but they really had the inside stacked up pretty well. I think if he runs that ball again, he'll probably keep it outside because he ended up just gaining two on the play. Moving the ball up to the four-yard line for second and goal. I believe it was number 75, Anthony Williams, senior, who's 6'3", 265. Just over five minutes to go here in our opening quarter of the quarterfinal playoffs. Huntington leads three to nothing, looking to extend the advantage. Crawford back to pass. He's gonna tuck it and run. Reaching for the end zone. They say he's in, touchdown Highlanders. I tell you what, Spring Mills has come close to a horse collar that time and over here on Zaw Jackson once. And I saw one of the Huntington players like make the motion where you're throwing the flag and he was grabbing his shoulder pads and looking at the ref going, you don't think he got him? <laughs> that was Avante Crawford's fourth rushing touchdown of the season. Something he has gotten better and better at as the season has progressed. Eye eye on for the extra point, but he will have to wait as there is some laundry on the turf. Okay. It looks like Honey's is going back up this time for the first time. Yes, it is a false start on the Highlanders. So it's going to move the ball back to the eight-yard line. Three penalties in the game. First one on the Highlanders. Aye, aye, getting set for the kick. Snap is good. Hold is good. And the kick is good. Huntington leads 10 to nothing with four minutes and 47 seconds left in the first quarter. We're gonna step aside for a short break. 
You're listening to Huntington High School Football on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Planning for a funeral is never easy, and selecting the right mortuary can be important. Family-owned and operated for over six decades, our family has helped other families going through the most difficult time. Chapman's Mortuary and Crematory can help you plan arrangements today or offer a pre-need funeral plan in line with your intimate wishes. And now, we provide Huntington's only on-site crematory. Call us for a free consultation. Chapman's Mortuary and Crematory, serving the Tri-State for over 60 years. Mr. Cooper, we have an emergency at a middle school. Thank you. Board office, will you activate the crisis team? This is not a drill. In Cabell County Schools, we are ready, alert, and aware. and 47 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Huntington with a 10 to nothing advantage over Spring Mills in this quarterfinal playoff matchup. The Highlanders just scoring a touchdown on a run by their quarterback, Avante Crawford. Spring Mills now will start this possession at their own 30. And it's Eaton with the carry on first down, trying to stretch this one out to the far side of the field, but he is tackled for a loss. Caillou Jackson in there immediately, caught him in the backfield, and it'll be a two-yard loss officially back to the 28th, second and 12. They took the fair catch that time uh, on the pop-up kick, number eight once again pulling it in, but uh, the sun's kind of in your eyes when you're looking that way into a pop-up kick. Second and 12. Spring Mills in a shotgun formation. Two receivers to the near side of the field. And the pass is going to go that way. Intended for Kenyon Mills. But he was unable to make the grab. Had his outstretched arms just touch the ball. But a little too far out in front to make the grab. Yeah, I didn't like the effort, to tell you the truth. I felt like he could have maybe laid out and come up with that ball. But he needs to come back to it when the quarterback's under pressure like that. So the incompletion brings up third and long, third and 12 for Spring Mills at the 28 yard line. Anderson takes the snap, drops back, has a little bit of time, throws the ball over the middle and another catch is not made by Kenyon Mills. Mills and Anderson just not on the same page here early on. Yeah, he just flat dropped that one, hit him right in the hands. Anderson couldn't have ran up there and laid it in there any easier, and it forces another punt here by uh, number eight, Ryan Schwartz. Schwartz to punt, standing on his own 15-yard line. Zaw Jackson back to return for the Highlanders. Of course, I hear Schwartz. I start thinking of a Christmas story. One of Ralphie's best friends was <laughs> Schwartz. Better snap this time, and Swartz is able to get the punt off. That takes a Spring Mills roll all the way to the Highlanders 37 yard line. Sometimes it's a battle of field position, and while the Cardinals still looking for that first score, at least able to flip the field on that possession. Yeah, absolutely, a good punt that time, 35 yards, rolled dead. Huntington takes over again in good field position once more. The Highlanders have scored on each of their first two offensive possessions up to this point. Crawford hands the ball off. It's Zod Jackson running to the left side of the line. He's able to pick up about three yards on first down, make it second and seven. 75 again in there on the stoppage. The ball down at the Highlanders 40 yard line. As we tick under three and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Shotgun formation, two receivers to the near side of the field, one to the far side. 
A running back to Crawford's right. Fakes the handoff, throws a screen pass to Mikey Johnson, who was able to get upfield for about three yards, however, penalty marker down. Yeah, it looked like somebody went low on the block. They're down right at the line of scrimmage. It was a four-yard pickup to the 44-yard line, but we'll wait and see if it stands. And they're trying to decide whether they go back to the original line of scrimmage or give him the yardage and then mark Take the third there. Down. Yeah. So we'll see which way we go with that. The officials still discussing things. And now backing the ball up. It's going to go back to the Highlanders 34 yard line. So it's going to be second and 13. 13 is better than 20. Yes. So you catch a break by getting the yardage. Trips receiver set to the far side of the field. Crawford takes a snap, looks that way. Lofts one down the field looking for Mikey Johnson who makes the leaping catch. Throws a defender off of him and runs into the end zone. Touchdown Highlanders, 63 yards to the house. Number two, uh, Kenyon Mills, no hands for tackling either. That time he went up with Mikey Johnson. Johnson took the ball away from him, and then he pulled out of the tackle and outraced the other defender who was trying to clean it up from behind, and he had no chance of catching the, the basketball or turned football hero. That is the third touchdown reception of the season for the six-foot-three senior Mikey Johnson. Johnny I I on to tack on the extra point. His kick is good. Huntington leads 17 to nothing. Just under three minutes to go here in the first quarter. We're going to step aside for a short break. You're listening to Huntington High School Football on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Wow. Yeah. I did not see that. Going out? Hungry? Have kids? Looking for a fun, casual joint? Then Roosters at Pullman Square in Huntington is the place to be. Bring the kids 12 and under on Tuesdays, and they eat for just 99 cents all day long. That's right, an entree, two sides, and a drink for less than a buck. Plus, Tuesday at Roosters means a featured appetizer all day for just $2. Roosters will lighten your mood and not your wallet. And you can always enjoy your favorite sports on Roosters 40 TVs. Roosters at Pullman Square in Huntington. A fun, casual joint. Hi, I'm Doug Nestor. I'm from Canova, West Virginia. And when I'm back home, you can find me at my local Parmar store. We had that gold and blue pride at your local Parmar store. We are coming to your neighborhood soon. West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Maryland. We have you covered. Download the Parmar app and sign up for the Parmar Rewards Card. Food, gas, groceries, and more. We are Gold and Blue Proud, and we are Parmar Stores. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Sang Stadium, where the Huntington Highlanders lead 17 to nothing in the first quarter over the Spring Mills Cardinals. The Highlanders uh, dominating in the playoffs the last few years, and that's how this game has started as well, Woody. And and for about the third time in a row, the Cardinals find themselves at the 30-yard line. It hadn't been good for them so far. Yeah, Swartz returning the ball to the 30 for the Cardinals. Anderson is picked. The interception made by Walt Williams. Walt coming up with interception on the season number one for him. And that's got to feel pretty good in a playoff game. Man, what a... Would have to think that that was some miscommunication because Anderson threw it right to Williams. Maybe a receiver zigged when he should have zagged or one or the other. However, Walt Williams will not complain, neither will his Highlander teammates. The offense back out on the field at Spring Mills 34 yard line. First and 10 for the Highlanders. Two minutes and 32 seconds left in our opening quarter. Saw Jackson's going to get the carry. Running to the near side of the field. Great blocking. He's inside the 20. He's got the first down and more. 
Finally marked down at the 16-yard line. Yep, number two making the tackle, Kenyon Mills. It's a 17-yard pickup by the junior running back, Zaw Jackson. And the Highlanders back in the red zone. First and 10 at Spring Mills, 16-yard line. The Highlanders not taking their foot off of the gas just yet. <laughs> Already up three scores and not satisfied. Crawford fakes the handoff, looks over the middle, threw a bit of a jump ball for Tavion Wilson, but just a little too much air on that one. Pass lands incomplete in the end zone. That'll bring up second and 10. That's one of the few misses <laughs> the Highlanders yeah. have had on anything so far in this game. Yeah, not much going wrong for Huntington, not much going right for Spring Mills. No, that's for sure. It's a long bus ride to have to make down here to have the game kind of blow up right in the first quarter. Second and 10. Crawford with two receivers to his left. But he throws to his right. A little too much on that pass as well. He was looking for Marshall Christus in the end zone, and really I think he might have had him there. Yeah, I think he, he just got too much under it. And it's a tough sun for the receivers looking back yes. at the ball. So you got to think about that a little bit. Maybe he'd like to run corners or something like that. But uh, Marshall Christus, who caught one pass last week in his first game back in about three, uh, going to see some more play time today, I'm sure. This definitely is a big change every other Huntington home game this season kicking off at 7.30, so six hours ahead of schedule. Third and 10, Crawford throws the ball to the near side of the field, pass incomplete, out of bounds. He was looking for Malik McNeely, but I don't believe McNeely was able to break off his route and get turned around in time to see the football. That'll bring up fourth down and puts the punting no, excuse me, field goal team onto the field to attempt a 33-yard field goal. Senior kicker, Johnny I.I. Continuing to make an impact on this game. Already a field goal made. Looking for his second. The kick is up, and it is good. I.I. still yet to miss <laughs> on the season. With just over two minutes to go in the first quarter, Huntington leads 20 to nothing. We're going to step aside for a short break. You're listening to Huntington High School Football on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Hi, I'm Wyatt Milam. I'm from Canova, West Virginia. When I'm back home, you'll find me at my local Parmar store. We had that gold and blue pride at your local Parmar store. We are coming to your neighborhood soon. West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Maryland, we have you covered. Download the Parmar app and sign up for the Parmar Rewards Card. Food, gas, groceries, and more, we are Gold and Blue Proud, and we are Parmar Stores. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Cabell County Schools has a zero-tolerance policy for bullying, harassment, and intimidation. We're excited to provide the Stop It mobile app for our students. Stop It has two powerful features. Students may report incidents or talk directly to school officials. Cabell County students have the power to end harmful and inappropriate online or physical bullying. You can download the app from Apple or Google Play. Together, we can create a safer, kinder school community. Minutes to go in the first quarter, and the Highlanders dominating early up 20 to nothing over the Spring Mills Cardinals. Spring Mills will now start this possession at, oh, and a fumble on first down, but the Cardinals able to scoop it back up. Spring wow. Mills starting on its own 31, however, able to scoop up the fumble and Run forward for about four yards. Yeah, good job by Eaton of picking it up and going with it. And he was brought down by uh, Huntington's number 10, Malik McNeely. You're going to see him and Landon Miller's trading times there at that linebacker during the game. And also Cam Veazey, the leading tackler on the team. 
came into the game today with uh, 91 tackles. Have to imagine he is going to hit triple digits before it's all said and done. Second and six. Nice pass to the far side of the field by Max Anderson. Austin Spinks with the catch. He gets so about a four-yard pickup. It's going to make it third and three. Cardinals offense really needs to get going still in the first quarter. Yes, it is 20 to nothing, but hey, if you get the next couple of scores, it's anybody's ball game. Yeah. But need to do that sooner rather than later. Third and three. Anderson takes the snap. He's going to keep it himself. He's hitting the backfield and dropped at the line of scrimmage. That's going to bring up fourth down. The Highlander defense just continuing to be so tough against the run. Markel Jones, Cam Vesey collide on the quarterback, and they're going to have to punt again. I would watch maybe for a fake here. They're, they're probably, even though it's, we're under a minute to go in the first quarter, they might be feeling a little desperate on the far yeah. sideline. The punting unit on the field for now. But that doesn't mean we won't see some trickery. And it is a fake punt. Swartz throws the ball down the field, and a great attempt was made by Anderson, the quarterback, playing wide receiver that time. Got a paw on it. But Knocked the away by the uh, quarterback of the Highlanders out there at safety, yeah. and uh, Vontae Crawford came up with it. So another turnover on downs. And once again, Huntington High starting inside of Spring Mills 40 yard line. Still 27 seconds to go in the first quarter. Huntington leads 20 to nothing. Yeah, I mean, the, those kind of plays really kill you when the other team is already getting after yes. you. First Tw and 10. Sorry, Woody. Uh, 27 minutes to go, and they may score again. Crawford throws out of pressure. Might have been a backward it's, pass there. Wilson yeah. able to scoop it up and run forward. And what almost looked like a near disaster <laughs> actually turns into about a five-yard pickup. Boy, I tell you what, you know you're going good when you get that play to work. I mean, he, he was in the grass, threw it sideways. The referee... Never moved, so we knew it was a backwards pass. And uh, Tavion Wilson scoops it up and turns it into about a four-yard gain. So that makes it second and six. Still 16 seconds to go in the quarter. Jackson Hatfield in the game at quarterback. Ooh. Quarterback keeper, and he is hit hard. Brought down at the 40-yard line. Lost six yards on the play. Big. Big man, Anthony Williams makes the tackle. Meanwhile, over here, Robbie Martin hooked up with number four of the uh, of their team, and that's Xavier Anderson, the younger brother of the quarterback. They had some words after it was all over, but yep. now it's the end of the quarter. After 12 minutes of play, Huntington leads 20 to nothing. We're going to step aside for a short break. You're listening to Huntington High School Football on ESPN 94.1. I can't get much for five bucks these days, unless... Is that a real song? I think she liked it. Your choice of sandwich plus all this for just five bucks is worth celebrating. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's Piggy Bag. Hi, I'm Tarambus Patrick from Charleston, West Virginia. And when I'm back home, you'll find me at my local Parmar store. We had that gold and blue pride at your local Parmar store. We are coming to your neighborhood soon. West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Maryland. We have you covered. Download the Parmar app and sign up for the Parmar Rewards card. Food, gas, groceries, and more. We are Gold and Blue Proud, and we are Parmar Stores. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Second quarter underway here in Huntington. The Highlanders lead 20 to nothing. And a nice catch and run by Huntington's junior running back, Zod Jackson. Able to get 
close to the line to gain. It's going to be a fourth and four. Jackson with an eight-yard catch and run. Looks more like two and a half, though, uh, at the 31 yeah. and the marker at the 28. Right, so. that might be a long three. And now Huntington takes a timeout after the end of the quarter, so Billy wanted to talk about something. An opportunity here for Huntington to almost put this game away. A 27 to nothing would Absolutely. be hard-pressed to imagine that Spring Mills would be able to pull off the comeback from that far down because, well, the Spring Mills offense not been able to get much of anything done up to this point, and it's been a real struggle defensively as well for the Cardinals. No. I mean, honestly, when you're down to this point in the season two versus seven, you know, you think it's going to be a good battle, but yep. it just seems like Huntington is putting on the kind of show Martinsburg did last night to yep. Jefferson. Fourth and three. Trips receiver set for the Highlanders. And Tavion Wilson makes the catch and able to get forward for the first down. A couple of additional yards on the play. He is finally brought down at Spring Mills 23 yard line. Wilson moves the chains for the Highlanders. Still 20 to nothing, and Huntington looking to make this a four touchdown ball game. Crawford drops back to pass, lofts one down the far side of the field. He's got Malik McNeely in the end zone. Touchdown, Highlanders. Unbelievable. I mean, they are just on a roll right now. 22 yard. Pass to the end zone to the six foot three senior Malik McNeely. McNeely having an impressive season as the yes, he has. exact body frame that you would want in your wide receivers. His seventh touchdown receiving, eighth touchdown of the year. And the boys in white were a little early again, Spring Mills. Penalty markers down, waiting to. Hear the official call, but could be on Huntington. I mean, uh, they might have moved. So the officials taking just a moment now, finally signaling that the penalty is on Spring Mills. That's the kind of penalty that probably you decline because it makes it a steeper angle to take it unless you decide to go for two. Yeah. But you've got a guy who's perfect. Kicking. Watch chase points. So, yeah, just let him do his thing. The snap is good. Hold is good. And the kick is good. I.I. remains perfect on the day and perfect on the season. With 11 minutes and 18 seconds to go in the first half, Huntington leads 27 to nothing. We're going to step aside for a short break. You're listening to Huntington High School Football on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM. 9.30. The Marshall Orthopedics High School Game of the Week is presented by the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute. Fueled by your neighborhood Parmar store. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. And sponsored by Jason Elkins State Farm. The Marshall Orthopedics High School Game of the Week from Kendra Digital Sports. Adventure takes you here, but much of it starts right here in West Virginia, where Toyota has lived alongside hardworking West Virginians for over 25 years, investing over $2 billion in the Buffalo manufacturing plant and bringing in over 2,000 jobs. And that helps fuel the local economy. Thanks for making Toyota...
point for the Huntington Highlanders who lead 27 to nothing over the Spring Mills Cardinals. Spring Mills with a run on second and five. Number three, Avante Crawford in on the stop along with number four, Cam Veazey. That was Alex Eaton with the carry, able to make his way to Spring Mills 27 yard line where it will be third and three. 10 minutes and 15 seconds to go in the first half of play. Everything going the Highlanders way up to this point. This is their fifth series. They do not have a first down yet. Third and three. Anderson has some pressure, gets rid of the ball, and a leaping catch is made on the far side of the field. Kenyon Mills with the reception. Zod Jackson went for the interception yes. and just missed the ball, and that gives them their first first down. He had his eyes on the end zone. Thought for sure at least Jackson would be able to tip that pass, but just over his hand and into the waiting arms of Kenyon Mills. First and 10 for the Cardinals. Two receivers to the far side of the field, one to the near side. Anderson is going to tuck it and run. He gets a decent pickup on first down, brought down just shy of the 40-yard line. Walt Williams comes up, makes the tackle. They're going to mark him at the 38. So it's going to be second and four. Shotgun formation for the Cardinals. Once again, two receivers to the far side of the field, one to the near side. A running back to Max Anderson's left. And that's Eaton who gets the carry and a helmet yeah. popped loose. Uh, Caillou Jackson's helmet came off, so Robbie Martin will go in and spell him. Yeah, Caillou had his helmet pop right off and now jogging to the near sideline. So after a pickup of two yards, that'll bring up third and two. Spring Mills with the ball on its own 40-yard line, needing the 42. Anderson just going to QB sneak this one. And the ball uh, came loose again. He... Was able to get the yards to gain, though. Didn't see the, the ball pop loose, but there were a ton of bodies there in the middle of the field. <laughs> you could see, though, that... I think one of his linemen, maybe 75 Williams, got a hold of the ball as Huntington was trying to scramble and get on it. That's another first down. So first and 10 for the Cardinals. The ball on their own, 47. Eaton gets the carry. Running to the right side of the line. No, excuse me, that was Swartz getting the ball. Swartz able to make his way into Highlanders territory with a four-yard pickup. Places it at the Highlanders 49. Eight minutes and ten seconds to go in the first half of play. Spring Mills looking to get on the scoreboard. The Highlanders lead 27 to nothing. Ball the ball's loose. Fight for the ball on the turf and a couple of late hits. It is getting feisty on the field here in Huntington. You can tell these teams don't like each other more and more as the play goes on. Woody. Cam Vesey just walked away from him. 56 was trying to get away. The Braden Kirk is the center, who's a six foot two forty eight pound junior, taking on a six one one hundred eighty five pound linebacker. So it's going to be third and five after the fumble. The Cardinals keep the ball. Anderson takes a shotgun snap, throws the ball to Mills on the far side of the field, but it hits the turf and brings up fourth down. Anderson maybe short-armed that pass just a bit, landing well in front of his intended receiver. Believe that the Cardinals are going to go for it here. Already with a fake punt in this game. Down by four scores. You need something here. 
Fourth down, Anderson takes the snap, has some pressure. He is hit, continues to fight for the first down, but he's going to be brought down just a yard shy of the line to gain. Yep, looks like it'll be a turnover. Down on the bottom of the pile is number 20, Landon Miller. And he needed about five and a half yards and was stopped a half yard shy. Depending on the spot, the official is placing it down. Certainly appears as though it is short. Yeah, they'll bring the chains in, double check it. I don't. I think that's the thing to do on a fourth down. They got a pretty good spot out of it because I thought he went down uh, maybe a shade before that. But it's hard to see. There's a lot of bodies crashing into each other. Great effort by the quarterback, Anderson, to try to get the extra yards he needed to get the first down. And he nearly did. The but chain. I do think it's short. Yes, I have to agree with you, Woody. The chain game running out there right now to verify. Setting down the sticks near the ball, and that's going to be well short. Turnover on downs, Highlanders football. Huntington will start this possession on its own 46-yard line. Just over seven minutes to go in the first half of play. Huntington leads 27 to nothing. And the offense now looking for more. This might be, what, the worst starting position of the <laughs> day? It yeah, just, right I mean, by midfield. They're at their own 44-yard line. They did get a first down, a couple first downs that time, but just not enough against this Huntington defense. Very good. Trips receiver set to the far side of the field. Crawford, though, looking to the near side of the field. Hits Jamari Tubbs in the chest, but he bobbled the ball, and it falls incomplete. That one's on Tubbs. He hit him right in the hands on a, a little out drill. Should have picked up five to six yards there, but could not bring the ball in. Those are the plays that you love on first down as well. Just go ahead and get yourself in front of the sticks. Yeah. Make it to where you don't have to. You know, have two big plays in a row. But Tubbs has been a reliable target all season long, just unable to reel that one in. Second and 10, Crawford hands the ball off. It's Zod Jackson with the carry, hit hard as he worked his way into Spring Mills territory. 15, Anderson, quarterback, also the free safety, makes the tackle, a good pick up there. Six, seven, eight yards, so Zod still running very hard. He's got, uh, on the day, 83 yards on nine carries. Nearing halftime, and Jackson has just about half of what he had last week in terms of rushing yards. Finished last week's win with 159 yards on the ground and a couple of rushing touchdowns. Third and two. Crawford hands the ball off. Saw Jackson with the carry. He's got the first down. Brought down at Spring Mills 42 yard line. So that will move the chains again for the Highlanders. Huntington so far in the game, nine first downs against two for the Cardinals. Will Elk leads the offense out of the huddle. The center set with the ball. Ready to snap it back to Crawford, who takes the snap, hands it off to Malik McNeely. McNeely yeah. cutting back inside. A nice run on the sweep. However, a penalty marker down in the backfield. Yeah, it was basically a pass because he handed it forward to him. But uh, it was a 12-yard pickup, but will not stand. Yeah, the hold came behind the line of scrimmage. So it will remain first down. Still waiting to see where the ball will be marked down. And it's going to be a 10-yard penalty. The ball back to the Highlanders' 48-yard line. So it wipes out that game completely. And they'll be looking at first and 20. Over halfway through the second quarter with Huntington. Still up big, 27 to nothing is our score. 
four players to the far side of the field. Crawford immediately throws a screen pass that way to Malik McNeely. He fumbles. And the ball's ripped loose. Who's got it? Spring Mills saying they do. Nobody jumping around on the Spring Mills sideline, though, so we'll see how it turns out there. It is and it Spring is. Mills football. Looks like number 52 maybe was on the bottom of the pile. Prophet G. Yum. And he comes up with the fumble. McNeely caught the bubble screen and then tried to quickly get up the field but had the ball ripped away from his right hand. Yeah, he gained six yards, but fumble lost. So the Cardinals will now pick things back up on their own 46-yard line. Shotgun set for Max Anderson. Two receivers to each side and a running back to his left. Fakes the handoff, throws the ball to Mills on the far side of the field, who's able to get forward for a minimal gain on first down. Yeah, he was rocked by Walt Williams and finished off by Mikey Johnson. Three-yard pickup makes it second and seven. One yard away from Highlander territory are the Spring Mills Cardinals. Spring Mills still looking to get that goose egg off of the scoreboard. Over five minutes to go. In the second half, Eaton gets the carry this time. Ball and loose. the ball's loose again. I think that they came up with the ball again. Number 55 jumping on the ball that time on their offensive line. Recovering the ball near the original line of scrimmage. I think it's Eason uh, Werner because we've got two 54s there together. Yeah, Usually no you don't have doubles in linemen, so we'll assume he's 55. So it's going to be third and ten. The ball back at the original line of scrimmage on Spring Mill's 46-yard line. Three receivers to the near side of the field, one to the far side, Eaton and at running back. Anderson gets the snap and rolls to his right. Oh, a big block made by Eaton in the backfield. Anderson going to tuck it and run. He's got the first down. Finally brought down. At the Highlanders' 35-yard line. Yeah, Walt Williams finally makes the stop, but that was a great run that time for sure. So that was a 19-yard pickup by the Cardinals' junior quarterback. That yeah. puts him up to five rushes for 39 yards. And what a hit made by Eaton in the backfield. Oh, yeah. Sealing off the defender. Great block. First and 10. For the Cardinals, under four minutes to go in the second quarter. This time it's three receivers to the far side of the field, but Eaton is going to get the carry. Running hard up the middle, keeping those feet chopping. Able to pick up three yards on the play. That'll make it second and seven. All three linebackers here on the stop that yeah. time. Cam Vizi, Landon Miller, and uh, Walt Williams. That is a team tackle by the Highlanders. The ball now on Huntington's 32-yard line as the Cardinals offense picking up some momentum. Second and seven. Anderson takes the snap, looks to his right. Throws the ball to Mills on the near side of the field, but unable to get a foot down. He was out of bounds. I mean, it wasn't even close particularly. So the incompletion makes it third and seven. The Cardinals have been able to get the ball into Highlander territory a couple of times, but the offense just seems to fizzle out right about this point. Yeah. Third and seven. Anderson takes the shotgun snap, throws the ball to the far side of the field, and a quick tackle is made by the Highlanders on Zachary Bender. Bender able to pick up a yard, if that, on the catch and run. And that will bring up fourth down, fourth yeah, and six. Yeah, great, great tackle by Wiz over there, a Khalif Ty coming up, playing the, right now he's at the uh, corner, 
because they had in uh, a, a different safeties, moving some people around. Now we're back to Zaw and Tavian Chandler at the corners. Sticks Chandler manning the near side of the field. Zaw Jackson on the far side. Fourth and six. Anderson with three receivers to his right, takes the snap and looks that direction. Throwing the ball down the field and right into the hands of Mikey Johnson. Johnson gets out of one tackle, picks up some blockers near midfield, and trips by the turf monster inside the 40-yard line. But what a play made by the senior defensive back. Wow. I mean, he made a great move, caught the ball around the 20-yard line, and then took back up field, and it was a really great pick. Well, making more like the 14-yard line. Yeah. And uh, big return, clear into their territory. Flag on the play. They're late. Fishers are going to have to take control out here. I mean, both sides are being chippy. It's, it's not just Huntington. It's not just Spring Mills. The guys are kind of giving each other extra bumps and shoves. Just and one last hit after the whistle. Now we got an unsportsmanlike. On Huntington. So that penalty will cost the Highlanders some yards after the great interception and return by Mikey Johnson. And an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty called on the Highlanders' sideline as well. That gets a couple of boos here in Huntington. I think head coach Billy Seals, though, it, it's it's just not a game for him if he doesn't get warned at least once. No. Well, the first one's a 15-yard penalty. Are they going to step off yards on the second one? Well, the yard marker back at the Highlanders, 32. And now the ball placed at the 33-yard line. So. Okay, that's about right because they yeah. the, the flag was down at the 48 on the Huntington side. So they move it back to 33. So that's that's exactly right with 2.01 to go here. Two-minute drill time for the Highlanders offense looking to add one more score here in the first half of play. Crawford hands the ball off to Zaw Jackson running to the right side of the line. Good pickup by Zaw on first down. Brought down at the 39-yard line. It's a six-yard pickup, and that'll make it second and four. Tackle made by 54 that time for the uh, guys from up in the eastern panel. Bryce Layton, a junior, makes it stop. Shotgun set for the Highlanders. Crawford sends a man in motion. It's Tavion Wilson. Penalty marker on the field. I believe the Highlanders... Moved early and also had a couple of players in motion at the same time. <laughs> so so that would be the exact thing that illegal procedure yes. covers. <laughs> so a penalty on the Highlanders. Wipes out the first down pass by Avante Crawford. Also stops the game clock with one minute and 16 seconds left in the first half. Well, I know Huntington would like to get one more into the end zone before the half if they could. That would put them up 34 to nothing and maybe would set up a running clock in the fourth quarter. We've seen the running clock in just about every Huntington game this year. You and I, Woody, calling every Huntington game this season. It was almost a given early in the season. Don't necessarily expect that outcome in the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, you know, you had all those 86 to nothing, 58, 77, 49 to nothing, and another 86 to nothing. Second and nine, Crawford fakes the pitch, sets up the screen pass to Zaw Jackson. Robbie Martin gets a block. Jamari Tubbs pitches in with another. Great block by Jamari Tubbs. Uh, Robbie did just all he needed to do. He bumped the yes. guy, and that threw him off. An excellent catch and run by Zod Jackson getting well into Spring Mills territory. 32-yard catch and run. Zod Jackson has really turned it on here in the playoffs. And they're back to where Mikey Johnson had gotten yes. the ball on the <laughs> interception. Just took a couple of plays to get there. All's well that ends well. 
Highlander offense breaks the huddle. Shotgun formation. Three receivers to the far side of the field after Mikey Johnson was sent in motion. However, the Highlanders requesting a timeout before the play began. Coaches didn't seem too happy on the Highlanders' sideline. Think somebody maybe lined up in the wrong spot. Sure. So that stopped things with 51 seconds to go here in the second quarter. The Highlanders still lead by four scores. 27 to nothing is the score at the moment. Well, I mean, it's, what a game. Avante Crawford has a rushing touchdown, receiving touchdown for McNeely, receiving touchdown for uh, Mikey Johnson as well. Uh, they've played extremely well during this game in all phases and haven't had to punt. They have now uh, nine first downs so far in the game. So and make it 10 on that last first down. First and 10 for the Highlanders. Early movement again. I believe this time is going to be on Spring Mills. Well, they have not been able to get that going for them today. It's the third, third time they've been called for that. The hard count by Avante Crawford paying off in this game. So that'll move the ball forward five yards on the encroachment penalty. First and five for the Highlanders. Still 51 seconds left in the second quarter. The Highlanders needing to go 29 yards to the end zone. Crawford takes the snap, has some pressure, rolls to his left, going to tuck it and run, slides near the 20. However, another penalty marker down. In the backfield. Yeah. Crawford was able to get enough for the first down, but don't think this is going to stand. Nope. A holding penalty on the Highlanders. Yeah, I get the feeling they're maybe keeping an eye on Robbie Martin. And, you know, you, you could call holding on every down on offensive linemen. Yes. But, uh, you know, that's the second time I think he's been called already in the game. So that backs the ball up to the 39-yard line. Five penalties for minus 45 yards on Huntington in the first half. First and 15 for the Highlanders. Crawford drops back to pass. Throws one down the field looking for Tavion oh. Wilson. Just a little too much on Just it. Just a little long that time. Tavion Wilson... Still looking to make more of an impact on this game. Just goes to show the great depth that Huntington has, a multitude of ways to score. Yeah, I mean, a guy who wasn't even one of your main scorers early in the season when uh, you still had Dwayne Harris, he's just come on so much. He now leads the team in points scored. I mean, he's for, for the season. He's got 103 points, wow. 17 touchdowns, and one point after touchdown. Second and 15, Crawford throws the ball down the field. He's got a man. That's Malik McNeely, who spins out of a tackle, finally brought down near the 10-yard line. The ball is going to be marked down at Spring Mills' 12-yard line. Timeout has been requested. Do not see which team... Asked for the timeout. Well, first, it, and it is Huntington. So that should be their third timeout, I believe. Huntington saving the last few precious seconds on the clock. 10.8 seconds left in the first half. It was a 27-yard reception for Malik, and now he has 66 yards on four catches. The leader right now is Mikey Johnson with 70 yards on two catches. 
Uh, Zah Jackson has one catch for 32 yards, and Tavion Wilson has two catches for 18 yards. So they've been spreading it all over the place. That was 27 yards on that pass to Malik. And it just leaves the defense not knowing who to stay with or who to throw the most attention at. I look for them to either throw the ball to the end zone now or throw it towards the sidelines where if they don't get in, they can at least get out of bounds and save the clock. Yeah, maybe a time for a couple of shots to the end zone. Here it is. Malik McNeely makes the catch in the end zone. Touchdown, Highlanders. A little shove at the end, but the referee was right there and made sure it didn't turn into anything more. Malik celebrating with Markel Jones in the end zone. A 12-yard pass from Crawford to McNeely, ending with another Highlander touchdown and taking place with six seconds left in the half. Boy, that's just got to be a heartbreaker for Spring Mills. Johnny I.I.'s extra point is good. So Huntington now leads 34 to nothing. We'll keep it here in the time in between the kickoff as likely just another play or two before the first half concludes. And everything that Huntington could want so far, really just a, a couple of possessions not going the Highlanders' way. Yeah, I mean, even when they go backwards, they go forward again. I mean, it, you know, they, they got the ball on the return all the way down to the uh, Spring Mills 38. The penalties move them back, and they have to start at 33. And then it just takes them a few plays to get the ball finally into the end zone. Picked up a couple first downs on the play. And Malik McNeely having a huge day for this team. Johnny I, I also with... A really good performance today. Yeah. He is ready to send the ball down the field. Bit of a squib kick this time. Scooping up the ball is Jeremiah Jones. No, excuse me, you thought that was, well, <laughs> not 100% certain. Was that uh, 21 or 31? 31. Okay, 31. well, we don't have a 31 on our roster. So, But the Spring Mills Cardinals bringing the ball back to the 25-yard line, 0 0.6 seconds left. So maybe the Cardinals will go for a Hail Mary here or just knee the ball and lick your wounds at halftime. It is going to be a kneel, and that will be the end of the first half of play. Woody, your initial reactions on the first 24 minutes of tonight's game, or today's game, I should say. Yeah, you, you know, uh, th th they like sunlight <laughs> yeah. as much as they like the uh, lighting up the field, and they have just played tremendously. They're doing a great job. They're holding the kids back because they do cross to go to the locker rooms, and so nobody's going to be scuffling or anything like that you know emotions run high even though you know we would say there's a blowout these are young men these are yep. 16 17 18 year old boys really who uh some of them will be off to college but a lot of them are thinking about dances and proms and all sorts of things the coming sport season and you know you look at that scoreboard and you're like it can't be right it's 34 to nothing and it does it it turns the blood pressure up a little bit, just like it does on anybody. And and but they're football players and they're young football players. Sometimes they just can't contain themselves. But I think the refs have done a fairly good job of trying to keep it in check. And they haven't overcalled this game by any means. Uh, and you know it's the second week in a row we've seen really good officiating. So it's nice to have that. If you're going to wait all year for it. You might as well get good officiating yes. in the playoffs. Our score at halftime is 34 to nothing in favor of the Highlanders. We're going to step aside for a short break. You're listening to Huntington High School Football on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Hi, this is JJ Roberts from Huntington. And when I'm back home, you will find me at my local Parmar store. We have that thundering herd pride at your local Parmar stores. We are over 200 stores strong and growing. Download the Parmar app for even more savings and sign up for the Parmar rewards card. Whether it's food, gas, or groceries, we have you covered. We are Marshall and we are Parmar stores. 
there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Adventure takes you here, but much of it starts right here in West Virginia, where Toyota has lived alongside hardworking West Virginians for over 25 years, investing over $2 billion in the Buffalo manufacturing plant and bringing in over 2,000 jobs. And that helps fuel the local economy. Thanks for making Toyota the number one selling brand in West Virginia. See your dealer and start your adventure today. Toyota, let's go places. You really can't get much for five bucks these days, unless... Is that a real song? I think she liked it. Your choice of sandwich plus all this for just five bucks is worth celebrating. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's Piggy Bank. Here at Thornhill, our goal is to provide you with the best automotive experience. From our state-of-the-art facilities, amenities, and certified staff, we call family. You'll be offered the best experience you deserve. We take pride in our focus for customer care, bringing the best quality and support for all of our customers' needs. What are you waiting for? It's your time to get behind the wheel with Thornhill. Get started now at thornhillautomotive.com. Just tag it at Thornhill, where it's all here for you. US 119 Chapmanville and Logan, WV to Belfry, Kentucky. can't get much for five bucks these days unless is that a real song i think she liked it your choice of sandwich plus all this for just five bucks is worth celebrating choose wisely choose wendy's piggy bag This is J.J. Roberts from Huntington, and when I'm back home, you will find me at my local Parmar store. We had that thundering herd pride at your local Parmar stores. We are over 200 stores strong and growing. Download the Parmar app for even more savings and sign up for the Parmar Rewards Card. Whether it's food, gas, or groceries, we have you covered. We are Marshall, and we are Parmar stores. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Adventure takes you here, but much of it starts right here in West Virginia, where Toyota has lived alongside hardworking West Virginians for over 25 years, investing over $2 billion in the Buffalo manufacturing plant and bringing in over 2,000 jobs. And that helps fuel the local economy. Thanks for making Toyota the number one selling brand in West Virginia. See your dealer and start your adventure today. Toyota, let's go places. Wide receiver leapt up and made a catch, shrugged off a defender, and ran 63 yards into the end zone. That score, an extra point, put the Highlanders up 17 to nothing. Johnny II then added his second field goal of the game. Had just one field goal all season and then two made field goals in the first half of today's game. Got to think he is feeling good about himself <laughs> right now. That field goal had Huntington up 20 to nothing. And then it was a pair of touchdowns by the six foot three wide receiver Malik McNeely. McNeely making plays all over the field today. Did have one ball ripped away from him, but that's 
basically the only blemish on his stat line in the first half. He's always been such a good receiving target for the Highlanders, but playing some on defense now too. McNeely just continues to make an impact on this team. So it's 34 to nothing at the half, and we are about to step aside for another short break. And Woody, you've got a special guest coming up after the break. Yeah, a uh, great young man who plays so well in many phases of the game, and he's only a sophomore. It's Tavion Wilson, and we'll come back and talk to him after this break here on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. The Marshall Orthopedics High School Game of the Week is presented by the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute. Fueled by your neighborhood Parmar store. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. And sponsored by Jason Elkins State Farm. The Marshall Orthopedics High School Game of the Week from Kendra Digital Sports. I care. I care. I care. I care. I care. It doesn't matter how big or small your problem is, we want you to know that we're all in this together. At Cabell County Schools, we want everyone in our school community to know that they belong and that we care. It starts right here in West Virginia, where Toyota has lived alongside hardworking West Virginians for over 25 years, investing over $2 billion in the Buffalo manufacturing plant and bringing in over 2,000 jobs. And that helped. He just he just told me to do it. You're fine. I thought it looked fun the first time, but yeah,
outstanding band. Let's hear it for the pit and the clarinets. The pit is the best. The Marshall Orthopedics High School Game of the Week is presented by the Marshall Sports Medicine Institute. Fueled by your neighborhood Parmar store. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. And sponsored by Jason Elkins State Farm. The Marshall Orthopedics High School Game of the Week from Kendra Digital Sports. I care. I care. I care. I care. I care. It doesn't matter how big or small your problem is, we want you to know that we're all in this together. At Cabell County Schools, we want everyone in our school community to know that they belong and that we care. Much of it starts right here in West Virginia, where Toyota has lived alongside hardworking West Virginians for over 25 years, investing over $2 billion in the Buffalo manufacturing plant and bringing in over 2,000 jobs. And that helps fuel the local economy. Thanks for making Toyota the number one selling brand in West Virginia. See your dealer and start your adventure today. Toyota, let's go places. Planning for a funeral is never easy, and selecting the right mortuary can be important. Family-owned and operated for over six decades, our family has helped other families going through the most difficult time. Chapman's Mortuary and Crematory can help you plan arrangements today or offer a pre-need funeral plan in line with your intimate wishes. And now, we provide Huntington's only on-site crematory. Call us for a free consultation. Chapman's Mortuary and Crematory, serving the Tri-State for over 60 years. This is not a 14 seed. <laughs> Independence was the state champ last year in Double A, and they shut out Winfield at Winfield, 13 to nothing. And Fairmont Senior beat Philip Barber, 42 to nothing, last night. Uh, and uh, you know there were some good games last night. Unfortunately, the two Triple A's that I was able to pull up on the, it's nice. The National High School Federation. Athletic Federation, I think it is, uh, you could join for a month and then cancel. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. So I, I could see some of those extra games that weren't being carried by our kindred digital folks and whatnot. So picked up a couple extra games there to watch last night. It was kind of fun. It was, you know, what are you going to do on a Friday night if you don't have a game? Yeah. You're going to sit and watch a game. Yeah, it, it definitely felt odd to be off for a Friday night for the first time in, what, about three months? Yeah, so. yeah, really. So uh, I had that off weekend, the second weekend of the year. And uh, as we have one of our daily hawk sightings here <laughs> on top of the mountaintop, uh, they're always flying around. We've got I hawks flying around, got drones flying around the field, a little bit of everything. Yep. Uh, let's step aside and take our final time out. When we come back, we'll have second half action here on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Mm -hmm. Good deal.
Going out? Hungry? Have kids? Looking for a fun, casual joint? Then Roosters at Pullman Square in Huntington is the place to be. Bring the kids 12 and under on Tuesdays, and they eat for just 99 cents all day long. That's right, an entree, two sides, and a drink for less than a buck. Plus, Tuesday at Roosters means a featured appetizer all day for just $2. Roosters will lighten your mood and not your wallet. And you can always enjoy your favorite sports on Roosters 40 TVs. Roosters at Pullman Square in Huntington. A fun, casual joint. Planning for a funeral is never easy, and selecting the right mortuary can be important. Family-owned and operated for over six decades, our family has helped other families going through the most difficult time. Chapman's Mortuary and Crematory can help you plan arrangements today or offer a pre-need funeral plan in line with your intimate wishes. And now, we provide Huntington's only on-site crematory. Call us for a free consultation. Chapman's Mortuary and Crematory, serving the Tri-State for over 60 years. Mr. Cooper, we have an emergency at a middle school. Thank you. Board office, will you activate the crisis team? This is not a drill. In Cabell County Schools, we are ready, alert, and aware. Stadium here in Huntington, where the second half of this quarterfinal playoff matchup between the Huntington Highlanders and Spring Mills is just about to begin. It was all Huntington in the first half of play. The Highlanders lead 34 to nothing here at the start of the third quarter. The one thing that Spring Mills can hang its hat on, or at least could during halftime. Okay, we get the ball to start the second half. Obviously need a score immediately here to try and get things going in the right direction, but it is going to be an uphill battle for the Cardinals of Spring Mills. Yep, we're getting ready to kick off a couple of close games. Uh, number three, Michigan leading Maryland 29-24. Louisville ahead of Miami, Florida. The number 10 cards up 31-28. Michigan State leading the Hoosiers 17-14. We'll catch you up on more scores later. I.I. swings his right foot through the football, a strong kick that is caught at the four-yard line. And on the return for Spring Mills is Zachary Bender. Bender able to make his way to the 25-yard line, about a 21-yard return to kick off the third quarter. Good job Huntington has all day special teams. I mean, Johnny's been perfect with his kicks and whatnot, but somebody has to block and snap and hold to make those things happen, and they've managed to keep them at uh, pretty deep in their starting field position. One late member of the defense running onto the field. That was Malik McNeely. Mills gets a carry on first down, and he gets a first down. Keenan Mills with the carry. Brought down at the 36-yard line, so an 11-yard pickup. Nice tackle there by 13, Mikey Johnson. Mikey Johnson making an impact on both offense and defense in the first half. Had an interception and also a long, leaping touchdown catch. First and 10. Anderson takes the snap, fakes the handoff. It's going to be a quarterback keeper, and he is hit in the backfield. Might have been able to fall forward to get back to the line of scrimmage. Tripping him up was number three, Avante Crawford. Quarterback on quarterback. The officials will give Anderson 
a yard on the play, so that will bring up second and nine. Six carries for 40 yards for him. He's there by, by and large their leading rusher. Really getting basically all of Spring Mills yards in the first half. It's a run here on second and nine. Good blocking. And Mills able to get into Highlanders territory and get another first down. The ball down at Huntington's 49-yard line. It's a nice job. Mills going back to the backfield. First and 10. Ball on the Highlanders, 49-yard line. Eaton gets the carry on first down. Good blocking up the middle. All kinds of space for him to work with. Had the first down before he was even touched. Finally marked down at the 34-yard line, 15-yard pickup. So the Cardinals now picking up some momentum on offense. However, they had a couple of times in the first half able to get around this position on the field, and then the offense just kind of sputtered out. Quarterback keeper here on second and 10, and a good run is made by Anderson. He just refuses to go down on first contact. He's got another first down for the Cardinals. Yeah, they're trying to get a little tempo here, uh, running it upbeat and moving the ball pretty much at will right now against this Huntington defense. So the ball... Now down to the 22-yard line. They've already matched their first down total on this drive. 12-yard pickup on the last play. Now first and 10. Mills gets the carry. Has some open space on the far side of the field. Lunges for the end zone. Touchdown, Cardinals. Spring well, Mills with a statement to start the second half. No kidding. I mean, they come out and just in chunks run the ball down the field, picking up 22 there, 12 on the previous, 14, 14, one yard and 11. So they really ran it so well and going 75 yards. Spring Mills saying, we know we are down, but we are not out. And really, that was the way this half had to start. Took just over two minutes to get the ball into the end zone. Reyes on for the extra point. His kick is no good. So our score is now 34 to six in favor of the Highlanders. Just under 10 minutes to go here in the third quarter. We're gonna step aside for a short break. You're listening to Huntington High School Football on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Going out? Hungry? Have kids? Looking for a fun, casual joint? Then Roosters at Pullman Square in Huntington is the place to be. Bring the kids 12 and under on Tuesdays, and they eat for just 99 cents all day long. That's right, an entree, two sides, and a drink for less than a buck. Plus, Tuesday at Roosters means a featured appetizer all day for just $2. Roosters will lighten your mood and not your wallet. And you can always enjoy your favorite sports on Roosters 40 TVs. Roosters at Pullman Square in Huntington. A fun, casual joint. Hi, I'm Doug Nestor. I'm from Canova, West Virginia. And when I'm back home, you can find me at my local Parmar store. We had that gold and blue pride at your local Parmar store. We are coming to your neighborhood soon. West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Maryland. We have you covered. Download the Parmar app and sign up for the Parmar Rewards Card. Food, gas, groceries, and more. We are Gold and Blue Proud, and we are Parmar Stores. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Welcome back out to Bob Sang Stadium, where the Spring Mills Cardinals just got onto the scoreboard with a long drive down the field to start the second half. Our score is now 34 to six, still in favor of the Highlanders. Reyes with a pop-up kick to the far side of the field. Mikey Johnson makes the catch, is able to fight through contact up past It looks past like somebody 35. got his face mask and there comes a late flag on the play. Johnson marked down at the Highlanders 37 yard line, but waiting to see the call on the penalty. I believe I saw a face mask grab as well, Woody. And that's the call. It is. So not want the, not what the Spring Mills Cardinals wanted after such a good start to the half. 
However, not hurt too, too bad with the penalty. Moves the ball up to the Highlanders' 42-yard line. Five-yard penalty, but the high-powered Huntington offense is now near midfield. I thought they had done away with the five-yard mark off, but I guess not. Shotgun formation. Crawford hands the ball off. It's Zod Jackson with the ball. Great blocking on the far side of the field. He's able to get the first down and then eventually guided out of bounds by the Cardinals' defense. However, penalty marker down on the far side of the field. It is holding on the Highlanders. Been a lot of those calls today. We've... Uh, We've seen it called a couple of times in the first half, and now it bites them again. So it was a penalty from the spot, and it's going to be first and ten once again. The ball back to the Highlanders' 42-yard line. Nine minutes and 43 seconds left in the third quarter. The 10 yards, though, puts Zaw Jackson right at 99 yards on 11 carries. So you like nine yards of carry out of your back. And this time, Jackson takes the direct snap and runs close to midfield, brought down at the Highlanders' 47-yard line. So that was a five-yard pickup and will make it second and five. Saw Jackson continuing to impress in this postseason run for the Highlanders. 104 yards now on 12 carries. I'm sure Huntington would love nothing more than to run the ball effectively here in the second half and keep that clock rolling. No doubt. Crawford takes a snap, drops back to pass, has some pressure, fights forward, and he's going to be able to gain a couple of yards on the play, two-yard pickup. He's down at Huntington's 49-yard line. Yeah, number four got a hold of him. That's Xavier Anderson, who plays that defensive end position for them. And But he wasn't able to bring him down in the backfield, and Crawford fought out to gain a couple of yards. Two-yard pickup makes it third and three. He's got three carries for eight yards in the game. Huntington with the ball on its own 49-yard line. Looking to get into Cardinals territory. Crawford drops back to pass, has pressure once again, so he's going to tuck it and run. He's got the first down. Marked down at Spring Mills' 44-yard line. So a gain of seven on that play. I don't... It's not a bad penalty, but players are falling on the quarterbacks when they slide. And I know it's not a vicious hit, but that's supposed to protect them from being oh, hit at all. As soon as you start that slide off limits. First and 10, nonetheless. Shotgun formation. Crawford sends a man in motion. That's Tavion Wilson. Hands it off, though. Zod Jackson gets the carry. Spins out of a tackle in the backfield. I mean, what a great job by him to... Not lose yards on that play, but turned it into a five-yard gain. Billy Seals thought he saw a face mask on that play and was talking to the officials. Came running down the sidelines. So second and five for the Highlanders. It's hard to believe he made five. Absolutely nothing was yes. there. And he did it all on his own. Almost tackled a yard into the backfield, but <laughs> threw on the spin cycle and then ran forward for a decent pickup. Five minutes into the third quarter, Highlanders lead by 28. Crawford hands the ball off. It's Zod Jackson who bounces this run to the outside, picks up some extra blockers. He's inside the 25 and then bumped out of bounds. Boy, he's just not going to be denied in this game. All the way down to the 25-yard line, giving him a 14-yard gain. 15 carries, 130 yards. He has been everything that Huntington has needed in the past couple of weeks. Almost 300 rushing yards the yep. past two weeks combined and still a ways to go in this contest. Jackson gets the ball again, bounces off a tackle, 
continues to fight forward. This guy isn't just a speed back running right into the defense for a six-yard pickup. I was going to say that you're exactly right. He's been everything they need. He's coming out now, but that last two plays showed when he got outside, he had more than enough speed to beat everybody on Spring Mill's team until he finally ran into a corner who was downfield. Then that time, he stopped in the backfield, spins, and gets six yards, carrying number 51 upfield with him. Built for power and for speed is Zod Jackson, but a new running back in the game, that's Bryce Winkfield. However, penalty markers on the field, blowing this play dead. I believe the officials pointing towards Spring Mills. Yes, it is an encroachment penalty on the Cardinals that will move the chains. They've had four penalties in this game for all sides. So it's now first and 10 on Spring Mills' 14-yard line as the Highlanders look for another touchdown. Midway through the third quarter. Crawford sends a man in motion. That's Wilson. Throws the ball over the middle. Has Malik McNeely who walks into the end zone for his third touchdown of the day. Malik McNeely, 14 yards to the house. The six foot three wide receiver doing everything for this offense today. Yeah, he's tearing it up today. <laughs> he's having a huge, huge day for this Huntington team. Now a crucial point after attempt as the Highlanders lead by 34 points. The kick by I.I. is good. Huntington now leads by 35. Over halfway through the third quarter, we're going to step aside for a short break. You're listening to Huntington High School Football on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Hi, I'm Wyatt Milo. I'm from Canova, West Virginia. When I'm back home, you'll find me at my local Parmar store. We had that gold and blue pride at your local Parmar store. We are coming to your neighborhood soon. West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Maryland, we have you covered. Download the Parmar app and sign up for the Parmar Rewards Card. Food, gas, groceries, and more, we are gold and blue proud, and we are Parmar stores. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Cabell County Schools has a zero tolerance policy for bullying, harassment, and intimidation. We're excited to provide the Stop It mobile app for our students. Stop It has two powerful features. Students may report incidents or talk directly to school officials. Cabell County students have the power to end harmful and inappropriate online or physical bullying. You can download the app from Apple or Google Play. Together, we can create a safer, kinder school community. where the Highlanders lead 41 to six over the Spring Mills Cardinals. Five minutes and 40 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Spring Mills returning the ball to their own 25 yard line. Kenyon Mills with the return, a 24 yard return by Mills. Good tackles by Tavion Wilson, Walt Williams. The Cardinals though, now down by 35 points. So. They will need a score before the third quarter concludes or we will have a rolling clock in the entire fourth quarter. Good pickup on first down, four yard gain by the Cardinals. That'll make it second and six. Eaton has run hard all day, not a lot to show for it. six carries, 21 yards. Two running back formation. Anderson, though, with the quarterback keeper. keeper. Not able to pick up much, though. A yard, if that. One yard pickup makes it third and five. 22, Walt Williams, 21, or 20. Landon Miller both in on that stop. Might have even been a Caillou Jackson in that pile. The Highlanders front seven just, I mean, what can you say about them? They, every single week, stuff the run, hardly give up any points. And especially after giving up a touchdown on the first possession of the half, 
You can see that the defense. Yeah, Robbie Jackson, the only one of the four guys up there who's really playing both sides. Pass down the field by Anderson as he is able to connect with Hope Bokwe. He got, he let uh, Chandler let him get behind him on that time. Mikey Johnson had to come over and make the hit to stop the play, but uh, not very good there by number 14 in his coverage. So the ball now inside the Highlanders 40 yard line, marked down at the 38. Nice catch and run by Hope Bokwe. First and 10 for the Cardinals. It's going to be a run play to Eaton on first down, running hard up the middle and picking up about three yards on the play. Marks down at Huntington's 35-yard line, so a three-yard pickup makes it second and seven. Substitution on the O-line for the Cardinals as Peyton Neff checks out of the game. Second and seven, Eaton gets another carry, and he is swallowed up by the Highlanders' defense after a two-yard pickup. Robbie Martin and Cam Vesey. Your worst nightmare yes. <laughs> if you're running against Huntington. The biggest one and the one with the most tackles. <laughs> So a two-yard pickup makes it third and five. Under three minutes to go in the third quarter. Huntington leads 41 to six. Anderson leading the offense, takes a shotgun snap, hands it off to Mills, who hops out of one tackle. That guy is pretty good with the ball in his hands, quick and shifty, but the Highlander defense up to the task on that play. Well, he ran at the wrong quarterback that time yes. because Zaj Jackson just hardly ever misses that tackle. He was able to just pick up one yard against Zaw and bring it up fourth and four at the 32. So now a very crucial play upcoming as we are nearing the end of the third quarter. Spring Mills can... Stop the rolling clock in the fourth with a score here. Fourth and four, Fumble. and the ball's loose on the turf. Anderson has to throw it down the field, and the catch is made. The catch is made by Xavier Anderson, his brother. Hey, when things are going wrong, just look down the yeah. field for your brother. That's right. A little bit of a security blanket there. Yeah, he got, he was kind of in no man's land. He was between the safety and the cornerback. Uh, which had stepped up thinking it was a fumble, and uh, they suddenly had to make a tackle on the big 6-6 six, six tight end. So now first and 10 at the Highlanders' 18-yard line. Anderson gets the ball to Mills on a jet sweep, who was able to get forward to about the 15-yard line. That would make it a three-yard pickup and second and seven. Still waiting for the officials to place the ball down. And it is going to be right at the 15 three-yard pickup. One minute and 32 seconds left here in the third quarter. Shotgun formation for the Cardinals. Penalty marker down before the play begins. Illegal procedure. So another penalty on the Cardinals, backing them up five yards. And that will make it second and 12. Still 92 seconds left to work with here in the third quarter. That's five penalties for minus 30 yards against the Cardinals. So the ball now back to the Highlanders 20 yard line. The Cardinals looking for their second touchdown of the day. Anderson leads the offense to the line of scrimmage. Three receiver formation, Eaton to his left. Anderson rolls to his left to pass, gets hit as he threw the ball, and the pass lands incomplete. He was looking for Micah Pryler, but just too much pressure. 
Yeah, quarterback pressure big time by Markel Jones, who hit him just as he threw. It was amazing that he even got the ball off. And got, got it close it to his target. Yeah. So third and 12 after the incomplete pass. Stops the game clock with one minute and 27 seconds left here in the third quarter. Third and 12 for the Cardinals. Trips receiver set to the near side of the field. Anderson, though, throwing to the middle of the field. He was looking for his brother again, but Zod Jackson with a pass breakup. Yeah, not only Zod, but you have Walt Williams there, too, in coverage. Zod went for the ball, and Walt stayed with the player, and there was no chance to get it to the outstanding. He's, he's going to be a real good one. He's just a sophomore. But six foot six, 191 pounds, you got to think a kid like that. Yeah. You know, he's a, a lot like the size of Tavion Wilson, you think he could probably carry 210, 220 like Tavion. Still a ways to go and grow for Anderson. Fourth and 12. Shotgun set. Anderson takes a snap, drops back to pass, gets rid of the ball, looking for his brother once again. The catch wasn't made, but a penalty marker is down. That's a terrible call. I mean, plain and simple, Zaw played the ball all the way, knocked it away from his hands, yep. and, you know, you haven't thrown that flag all day on any player. You just can't believe that, uh, you know, one of the best corners in the state deserved that. Can't say that I agree with the call either, Woody, but it appears as though that this is going to move the ball up inside the 10-yard line, or no, excuse me, right at the 10. Yeah, it's a half the distance penalty, so they lo lose 10 yards there, does, Mar does Huntington. So it remains fourth down, though, so still an opportunity for the Highlanders to get off the field. But the Spring Mills Cardinals requesting a timeout. Such a pivotal play upcoming that they want to make sure to talk this one over. So it'll be fourth and two when play resumes. Yeah. Ball on the 10. The Cardinals need the eight to move the chains. Yeah, I just, you know, they've been letting people play ball all day, and, and then you change it over there on the far sideline. Uh, I know you're getting chewed by them saying, why are we not getting some penalties? Because Huntington is aggressive, but so is their team. Yeah. And, and that's been the good part of this game. Uh, it's been simmering right there below yes. the bowling point. But they've <laughs> all – close a couple both times. Both teams have hit hard all day and, and get an extra shot when they can. It's the Cardinals offense back on the field, set at the line of scrimmage. Highlanders defense sprinting into position. I can't believe position. that there's not an umpire. Oh, he is in there holding it. Run heavy formation for the Cardinals. It's going to be a QB sneak, and the ball's loose, and Huntington's got oh, it. Ah. It was scooped up and running the other Zod. way for the Highlanders is Zod Jackson. One man to beat, and he beat him easy. Zod Jackson all the way to the house, but a hold flag. everything. Another flag is down. A flag down at the 12. So, so about an 85-yard scoop and score yeah. by Zaw, but let's see if it stands. Yeah, they had the quarterback stopped, and the ball came out. Still awaiting the official call. Zaw Jackson just Johnny on the spot on that play, <laughs> found the ball, found some open space. And a great job by the defensive front of not giving an inch there. They pushed them backwards, yes. actually from the 12, and that's why the ball was scooped about the 15. Both teams walking back toward where the play took place, though, so initial indications maybe that this penalty is on Huntington. It's a personal foul on the Highlanders. Half the distance to the goal once again. No, it's Huntington's ball because it made the stop. Oh, yes, that's right. And then they'll take it half the distance from the 12 back to the 6. Penalty took place after the change of possession. Well, that would have been a 
Crucial call going against the Highlanders, but Huntington gets the ball back. Didn't get the long touchdown by Zaw Jackson, but up 35 with 13 minutes to go. You feel good just having the ball back in your hands. Oh, absolutely. You know, you're at the six now, and, and that's not as good as a Zaw Jackson touchdown, but uh, it's still a stop, Yes, which is what you needed. So the Highlanders will start this possession on their own six-yard line. Just over a minute left in the third quarter. Robbie Martin, a little late joining the offense, getting set at left tackle. Offsides is called on this first and ten. Well, have to believe that was the call. Penalty markers on the field. <laughs> Early movement pretty often. It has nice been game. the call against this team numerous times in the game. I mean, the, it's unexcusable for linemen to have their nose right over the ball. Yes. You're looking at the ball. You should not jump off sides. So a free five yards for the Highlanders makes it first and five with the ball on their own 11-yard line. Which is a much better place to start the drive from. Crawford. Fakes the handoff, throws it over the middle, was looking for Tavion and Wilson, and a penalty marker is down. Here comes the makeup flag. Yeah, the Huntington faithful kind of standing, throwing their arms in the air after a couple of close calls going on the Highlanders. But, as you mentioned, Woody, a bit of a makeup call. Pass interference is called on the Cardinals. All over Tavion Wilson on that play. I, I thought the kid played it just physical. Yeah, I didn't think he really deserved that call either. You, you just can't suddenly start pulling them out when you're late in a game because the kids don't know how to react then. So first and 10 for the Highlanders. Ball at Huntington's 26-yard line. This time Wilson gets the ball on the jet sweep. And he has hit hard on the far side of the field. Able to pick up a couple of yards on the play, but really didn't have much room at all to work with. Well, I think they're trying to give Zah Jackson a little bit of a blow. He just ran an 88-yard run there with a fumble that turned out not to be a fumble. And he's been going both ways all game, a yes. corner and there. So probably a good time to get him out, rest him a little bit. He is the bell cow of this offense. He's back in now <laughs> and ready to go. Second and eight for the Highlanders. 17 seconds to go in the third quarter. Jackson gets the carry, running to the far side of the field, and I think that might have been just a bit late. You know, difficult for us to see yeah. from the booth whether the player just stepped out of bounds but saw a hit hard out of bounds. No penalty markers on the field, though. No. I believe that might have been 24. Is Kenny Smith has played some this year. But there's a 24 in the backfield now. There is a second player. Uh, Third and four for Huntington High. Shotgun formation. Crawford takes the snap. Throws the ball to Malik McNeely, who is unable to make the diving catch. And that will stop the clock with 2.3 seconds to go in the third quarter. It's not exactly what the Highlanders wanted from that possession, trying no. to milk some time off of the clock. But once you start the fourth quarter and they have the ball, the clock will be running. Yes. And even if the Cardinals are able to cut the lead down below 35, if you enter the quarter with a 35-point point differential, then it's a rolling clock no matter what. Fourth down, Wilson has to leap up to get the snap. Still a good punt, though. Takes a Highlanders bounce before it is scooped up by Josiah Brown of Spring Mills. A nice return by him. Able to make his way up past the 40-yard line. And that will do it for the third quarter. Huntington 
is ahead by 35 hour score, 41 to six. 12 minutes to go here in Huntington. We're step aside for a short break. You're listening to Huntington High School Football on ESPN 94.1 FM. And you really can't get much for five bucks these days unless. Is that a real song? I think she liked it. Your choice of sandwich plus all this for just five bucks is worth celebrating. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's Piggy Bag. Hi, I'm Tarambus Patrick from Charleston, West Virginia. And when I'm back home, you'll find me at my local Parmar store. We had that gold and blue pride at your local Parmar store. We are coming to your neighborhood soon. West Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Maryland. We have you covered. Download the Parmar app and sign up for the Parmar Rewards card. Food, gas, groceries, and more. We are gold and blue proud, and we are Parmar stores. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Just about to get underway here in Huntington with the Highlanders leading 41 to 6 over the Spring Mills Cardinals. So we will have a rolling clock here in the fourth quarter as the Highlanders look to put the finishing touches on a second round playoff victory. It's Spring Mills ball to start the fourth quarter. Okay, the officials are holding play to their set. Both sidelines a little antsy about that. Yeah, just kind of standing near the line of scrimmage. It appears as though every every one of the players is ready to go, but yeah. the officials, not just yet. All right, here we go. Underway in the fourth quarter here in Huntington. Spring Mills starts this drive off with a run. It's Josiah Brown running to the near side of the field. Just able to pick up a couple of yards, two-yard pickup, makes it second and eight. Landon Miller with the hit. That's his first carry of the day. So 11.30 to go here in regulation. And if you have not tuned into many games this year with the rolling clock, you know, it, it's, it's a bit obvious things are going to go quicker. But my goodness, how it seems like you're out of here in five minutes sometimes in the fourth quarter with – a clock that doesn't stop besides a couple of specific scenarios. And an interception is made by the Highlanders. Styx Chandler drifted back, put his hands out, and it almost looked like Anderson was going for him. Yeah, it really did. Uh, Anderson's brother, no chance of getting to that ball, was thrown too far downfield, and that's a nice... Uh, Nice play to make up for maybe an earlier miss on his part and uh, gives his team the ball back at the 17-yard line, first to 10. You know, at a certain point, you, you get desperate down by this much, and you're forced to take some shots down the field. Yep. And they went at Chandler, who they'd had a little bit of success against. That's true. Uh, didn't throw at Saw Jackson again. Imagine that. No, I have to think they're going to stay away from him. First and 10 for the Highlanders. And it's going to be a fake to Bryce Winkfield. Avante Crawford throwing it over the middle for Tavion Wilson. Nice break up there by 24, Eaton. Eaton Coming up from a uh, safety position. Eaton doing a solid job in his defensive back role and also running the ball hard every time he got an opportunity on offense. Been impressed with his effort in today's game. Huntington trying to get some fresh bodies out there. Second and 10 for the Highlanders. Trips receiver set to the far side of the field. Winkfield in the game at running back, and he gets the carry. Running hard up past the 20-yard line. It's going to be marked down at Huntington's 22. About a five-yard pickup by Winkfield on first down. No, excuse me, second down makes it third and five. Looked like he cut right into 
and 26, the linebacker, Graham, and uh, I, I guess he didn't see him because he was looking to this side, and he saw yes. lots of tacklers over here. <laughs> Third and five for the Highlanders. Crawford drops back to pass. All kinds of pressure, and he is brought down in the backfield, but face mask. Yes, I was just about to say, believe <laughs> that the Cardinals – Grabbed Crawford's face mask on his way down. After a big sack by the Cardinals, Boy, a penalty upcoming. That's devastating for them. I mean, it just seems like all day it's been, all right, we did, oh, no, it's a no, penalty. Yes. We're, we're slowing down their drive, and then we jump off sides. One step forward and two steps back. It is a five-yard penalty on Spring Mills. And it from the spot, so they actually play third down over, and it'll be third and ten now back at the original line of scrimmage. Under nine minutes to go here in Huntington with the Highlanders leading 41-6 to six over Spring Mills. Clock is already down to 8.45 and still rolling. Crawford in the offense getting set at the line of scrimmage. Three receivers to the far side of the field. Winkfield in at running back. Crawford, though, to throw the ball and a nice pass and catch. It was Marshall Christus who made the catch. Haven't seen the Highlanders tight ends get the ball a lot this season, but Christus, a good target down the field, always seems to find his way open. Yeah, it's two weeks in a row now he's had a catch. Uh, last week had a big catch for uh, 28 yards. That one's a first down and a little bit over 20 yards that time from the 17 to the 41. Under eight minutes to go in the ball game. First and 10 for the Highlanders. Crawford takes the snap, pitches it to the outside, and the ball's on the turf. And Spring Mills has got it. Andreas Reese unable to catch the pitch. Yep. Number 26 comes up with the ball. Uh, Nathan Graham called his name early. Haven't called it too much lately, but big play there as they could uh, get the ball at the Huntington 37. And this is one of the few times that the clock will stop when there's a rolling clock. You've got Timeouts, yeah. injuries, change of possession, a score. So with the change of possession, the clock stopped at 7.44. It's a run on first down. Eaton getting the carry for the Cardinals and getting very close to the first down marker. Nine-yard pickup makes it second and one. Seven minutes and 10 seconds to go here in regulation. As the Spring Mills Cardinals maybe just looking for another score, something to feel good about on the ride back home. Second and one. Eaton gets the carry again and gets the first down. And got rode down by number 54 in there defensively is Braxton Mount. We've seen a lot of clean jerseys playing as this has just been an exhausting game physically. The Cardinals move the chains again. Getting the ball to the Highlanders 23 yard line. And we've got a new quarterback in the game. That is number eight, Ryan Swartz. And he threw it to the old quarterback, yes. Max Anderson. <laughs> and coming up to make the tackle is number nine, Carmelo Sheffield, the cornerback who's in for Zah Jackson right now. Two-yard pickup on first down makes it second and eight. The ball on Huntington's 21-yard line. Midway through the fourth quarter. Swartz hands the ball off to Eaton, who is hit by Landon Miller at the 20-yard line. A little help by uh, Cam Vesey as well, but Landon Miller... I mean, Billy talked about this in the pregame. Great run stopper. Oh, yeah. He needs to work on his pass coverage a little bit, but he's just a junior. 
come back like Cam did. Uh, you know, he's going to be the senior backer back. Uh, Walt Williams is a senior. Cam Vesey is a center. So he's going to have to get better on that so he can run this team the way Billy wants it run. Yep. Next man up. Yeah. Third and seven. The ball on Huntington's 20-yard line. Swartz drops back to pass. Double clutches and lofts the ball toward the end zone and almost <laughs> intercepted by Mikey Johnson. Well, I think Mikey and Tavion Chandler were battling for the ball, and the receiver thought, maybe it'll just fall to me. <laughs> but Kenny Mills went away, or excuse me, Xavier Anderson went away without the ball because they knocked it away from each other. Kind of a, you got it, I'll take it there. Yeah. So the incompletion brings up fourth down, fourth and seven for the Cardinals. Couple of substitutions made. Clock now under 4.30 to play. Fourth and seven for Spring Mills. A snap to Swartz. Drops back to pass, has some pressure, rolls to his right, throws the ball for the end zone, and the catch is almost made. Great effort by Mills in the end zone, but good defense. By the Highlanders secondary. Carmelo Sheffield knocked it away from Mills at the last possible second. Made a really good play. A little bit physical as it has been all day. But Huntington will take over 20, first and 10. That will stop the game clock with just over four minutes to go in the ball game. Highlander offense. Jogging back out to the field, and we do have a change at quarterback. Jackson Hatfield in the game for Huntington High. And now somebody takes a timeout. Timeout has been requested by, I believe, Spring Mills, the couple members of the coaching staff running out onto the field, so I would have yep. to guess it was the away team requesting the timeout. I believe that's their first timeout of this half. You know, you want to keep – Fighting and battling until the end. Even well, you, you got to make sure because they're having the same problem Huntington is. The players are tired. Yes. It's been a physical game. Yeah, they've been banging on each other quite a bit. And uh, so you're trying to get subs in and replace the guys you can. And you want to make sure they understand how we need to line up and yep. make a play. Usually just a little bit cooler when these two teams are playing at night compared yep. to the middle of the day. Yeah, that's for sure. First and 10 for the Highlanders. Jackson Hatfield takes the snap, hands it off. King with the carry for the Highlanders, able to fight forward for a three-yard pickup. Number 26 coming up with the tackles, Graham. So a three-yard pickup by Elias King. Makes it second and seven. Under three and a half minutes to go in the ball game. The Highlanders looking to finish off this win and then get ready for a rematch against the Martinsburg Bulldogs. Second and seven, Hatfield takes the snap, hands it off to King, who is hit and dropped in the backfield, losing a couple of yards on the play. Well, just backing King up a yard to the 22. That'll make it third and eight. They, that, that just wasn't very smooth from start to finish on that play. A lot Jack, of Jackson runs over and gets the play for C.J. Crawford, but it's tough when you get thrown in a game like yes. this late. A lot of fresh jerseys getting their first couple of plays, so easy to have miscommunication as we see before third down. Yeah, Colin Gad, who is a freshman, six foot 235, he was way off at that time. False start, obviously. I think if he'd have held his position one more second, though, 35 for uh, Spring Mills was just yeah. about ready to have their fourth or fifth offsides of the day. Just about. So that is a five-yard penalty. Backs the ball up to Huntington's 17-yard line. Third and 13. 
Shotgun set, two receivers to the near side of the field, one to the far side. And it's going to be another handoff, and the Cardinals' defense makes the tackle immediately. That was Quinn with the carry for the Highlanders. Yeah, and 34 in there for the tackle is Zachary Schmuck. So the Highlander is not able to move the ball much on that drive, but able to get some time off of the clock. One minute and 20 seconds to go in the ball game. And the Highlanders in no hurry to get this punt off. Tavion Wilson to punt, standing on his own three. It's a high end over end kick that bounces near midfield. Does take a Cardinals bounce back into Highlander territory where Landon Miller down the ball. So now under a minute to go in the ball game. 56 seconds left for the Spring Mills offense to work with. So just a 30 yard punt there. Thing you wanted to do was get that one off quick. He wasn't so concerned about yardage with the clock running again under a minute. Spring Mills with the ball on Huntington's 47 yard line. It's a shotgun formation for Swartz. Two receivers in the near side of the field, but it's going to be a handoff on first down, getting the carry. Devin King. King able to pick up about four yards on first down. Cleef tie with the tackle. That'll make it second and six. Coming from the safety position now. Spring Mills has enough time to run one more play, but not certain that the Cardinals are going to do so. No sense of urgency. Starting to look toward their own sideline and the Huntington coaching staff and players from the sideline starting the handshake line. So the Highlanders with another playoff victory at home, another step closer to getting back to the state championship, Woody. Well, absolutely. I mean, the second half couldn't have gone any better for Huntington than it did. Uh, you know, you give up one touchdown, but, uh, you know, other than that, they controlled the tempo, they controlled the ball. Uh, and I think it, had they been pressed a little more and needed it, they could have probably turned it back up a notch. But once they had the big lead and the clock was going to run in the fourth quarter, then Huntington put it on cruise control for the fourth quarter and uh, cruised right into uh, uh, another win here in the postseason. And the rematch that everyone has been hoping and looking forward to, Huntington versus Martinsburg will take place next week. It was such a great game last season. Already looking forward to next week. Yeah, you know, Billy Seals has talked about all season, you know, while the Martinsburg players were talking about a revenge game and all that coming back to Huntington. Uh, Billy Seals has been saying, hey, who do you have to go through to win a state championship in West Virginia? you got to beat the Martinsburg Bulldogs somewhere yep. along the way. And they sure like, for the second year in a row, like to meet them here better than up there or in Wheeling. Our final score from Huntington, 41 to six in favor of the Highlanders. We're gonna step aside for one final break, but stay tuned in as post game is coming up next. You're listening to Huntington High School Football on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Hi, this is JJ Roberts from Huntington. And when I'm back home, you will find me at my local Parmar store. We had that thundering herd pride at your local Parmar stores. We are over 200 stores strong and growing. Download the Parmar app for even more savings and sign up for the Parmar rewards card. Whether it's food, gas, or groceries, we have you covered. We are Marshall and we are Parmar stores. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Adventure takes you here, but much of it starts right here in West Virginia, where Toyota has lived alongside hardworking West Virginians for over 25 years, investing over $2 billion in the Buffalo manufacturing plant and bringing in over 2,000 jobs. And that helps fuel the local economy. Thanks for making Toyota the number one selling brand in West Virginia. See your dealer and start your adventure today. Toyota, let's go places. 
You really can't get much for five bucks these days, unless. Is that a real song? I think she liked it. Your choice of sandwich plus all this for just five bucks is worth. The Huntington Highlanders with a quarterfinal playoff victory over the Spring Mills Cardinals. 41 to 6, our final score. Really, Woody, besides the opening drive of the second half, this game was all Huntington High. Yeah, it really was. Uh, you know, and and even in that drive, you know, they were they were having to run somebody who hadn't run the ball much all year and you know, they, they surprised them a little bit, but still they missed the extra point, and that still left the 35-point running uh, clock in the fourth quarter intact. And once they scored that goal, it was over then. They just had to play out the fourth quarter. But nobody nobody did very much with the ball. It was kind of fought on the Huntington end of the field. But, uh, you know, a couple of three first downs, and that was about it. So, uh Huntington, you know, will probably be here next Saturday, 1.30 against Martinsburg. I'm sure that, you know, Billy Seals is good friends with Dave Walker, and he's a guy he talks to a lot in the off season, And, you know, so they, there won't be any tricks there. They're just going to line up and see who's the be best team in the other side of the bracket. And, you know, now it's kind of wide open in the other side, though. Oh, for, yeah. For Bridgeport maybe to sneak in there to the state championship all the way from a number eight position or can uh you know can the guys who are down at uh princeton jump into the state championship because not a lot of folks expected to find them there this year no. either so uh you know should should make for a compelling championship whichever team manages to come out of that uh other scores today in games uh like we said hoover and north Marion are playing tonight uh, it was uh, Scott in the fourth quarter has a 26-21 lead. It's number four Scott against number five Weir, and they are late like our game just was. Williamstown beat East, beat East Hardy today 48-15. James Monroe beats Cameron 17 to nothing. You know, they had that as a close score a yeah. little while ago, and then suddenly Cameron didn't have any points again. Uh -huh. And then tonight, also playing is number seven, Tug Valley, will be at number two, Tucker County. And officially, all those things will be out there next week. But most of the Triple A's choose to go on Saturday because that's what day yep. you play at noon at Wheeling. If you're if you're good enough to win next week, then two weeks from now you get a at noon start. So Might as well get that rhythm going. Yep, that's it exactly, you know. Uh, and today was a little bit of that too. I mean, they started earlier. They brought them in. They had breakfast in the cafeteria. They still got their lift in for the game. I don't know that I've ever heard of anybody that lifts the day of the game, but it just gets them moving around, mm -hmm. pump them up a little bit. You're not looking it's to break any flowing. records today, but yeah, you get get the blood flowing, then you get paddled up and padded up, and you go out there and you play the game. And You know, Spring Mill's got nothing to hang their heads about. They they have a really nice team. And Best it's year in just, school history. Yeah. It, it, nine wins was a brand new record. They never had a home game. They won that game last week, and they come on the road and lose to the defending state champs. Yep. So, I mean, it, it should tarnish them from a really good year that they've had, and I, I'm sure they're going to be back in the mix. People just keep moving in to that Bartersville area, or uh, Bartersville, uh, you know, ba from Baltimore. Yeah. Especially DC, some. But the, I, when we were talking to some of the Spring Mill people before the game, he says, "Folks, just keep moving in here, and the people take the train to Baltimore, or they stay there all week and come home on the weekends, and it gets their kids out of the inner city. And that seems to be a nice move that's working out very well for their team. It's brought a lot of diversity into a state that honestly is about the least diversified state of all." <laughs> yeah, uh, wrong there. you know, and uh, it's uh, it's it's good to have those folks, and, and you know, it's going to be hard on our seniors have to get in that bus and ride six and a half, seven hours home tonight. But by the time you get home, you know, in a day or two to think about it, they'll remember that they broke a record and yep. and, and it did good things, moved to the second round for the first time, won at home for the first time, and and all that'll be important for their coach to build on next season.
Yeah, nothing to hang your head about if you no. are Spring Mills. An excellent season, but just ran into the wrong team. <laughs> well, that brings us to our thank yous portion of the broadcast. First and foremost, I want to thank all of you listeners and viewers out there, whether you listen to Woody and I on the radio or watched and listened along yeah. on the video stream. Thanks to all of you guys. Also want to thank. Especially all the listeners in Martinsburg today. Oh, exactly. I, I know we probably had a lot of folks oh, listening I guarantee in. It. And we thank you wanted, guys for staying in. Yeah, wanting to see who you got next week. And, hey, you'll be in Huntington. So look forward to seeing the Martinsburg folks. Also want to thank our friends with the video crew. They do a fantastic job every single week. Butch Mounts kind of yep. heads up the whole operation, make sure that everybody is at the games they need to be with all the equipment. And thanks to Butch for doing his part all season long. Also want to thank our statistician, Jimmy Morgan, who always gives us great stuff to talk about every single game and also just confirmed that it is going to be a Saturday game next week against Martinsburg. Thanks to Jimmy. Also want to thank our producer back in the Kindred Communications studios. We've got the main man himself, Big John, producing today. Uh, one of our by far most talented on-air people, but doesn't shy away from the extra work like board hopping as well. Thanks again to Big John, who did a fantastic job today. And, and don't forget, if you want to listen to the Marshall game kicks off in That's about right. an hour, it's only going to be on 93.7 The Dog. Yep. So, uh, you know, we'll be switching to ESPN programming here on uh, ESPN. And so we'll just get that out there if you're looking for it and, and you're a regular listener to the AM or 94.1. Uh, 93.7, the dog will be the place for Marshall today. Hopefully they can get a win yes. against South Alabama and get eligible for a bowl. And one last thank you. want to thank you, Woody. Always enjoy calling a game with you, man. It looks like we've got one more left this season. And we want to tell Paul Swan we're thinking about him. He's, yes. He's been battling the COVID bug, has been uh, attacking Kindred Communications, and we hope to see him back at things Monday. And also, best of luck to the Marshall soccer team, a 1 o'clock game tomorrow, standing room only. Tickets probably go on sale tomorrow. Uh, there won't be very many of them as they take on California Baptist and what I'm sure is the first trip home for many of the Californians, the first trip back to our home state of West Virginia. I guarantee it. Always love watching that herd soccer team. Your final score from Bob Sang Stadium, 41-6 to in favor of the Huntington Highlanders. They're off to the next round for a rematch against the Martinsburg Bulldogs. We'll be here for that contest next Saturday. Look forward to seeing you then. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great rest of your day.